Welcome back to Caffeine Confessionals. Today is a big day because it is departure time for the Challenge All-Stars Season 5. My name is Alan Aguirre. I'm joined by my lovely co-host. We have the Vermontian Zoe Tromboli. Hi, everyone. The Southern Luke Muncie. What's up, guys? And thank you to Pink Rose and Gamer at Vedmo.com for collecting all the information on who's supposed to be on Challenge All-Stars Season 5. We're going to go through the list of names, but also stay updated on Vedmo.com to see if anyone gets dropped, see if anyone gets added, to see if someone's actually an alternate. Keep up with all your spoilers there. Thank you to all of them for collecting all this information. But what we're going to, what we're going to do this, in this video slash podcast is we're going to go through each name one by one, give our thoughts on the cast members. We're not going to talk about any spoilers that happened on Season 40. We're not going to talk about anything that's going to happen on All-Stars 4 that hasn't aired yet. So that's the only stuff we're going to be talking about in this episode. So don't comment that stuff in our comments either because a lot of people like to stay unspoiled, including our podcast co-host Zoe. (laughs) But if you love the spoilers, like Luke, Vedmo.com is your place to be. Let's jump into the cast. They're going to be filming in Vietnam. TJ Lavin is hosting again for his 80th season ever. Uh, first cast member going down, alphabetical order, Amber Bazotra uh, from Big Brother 16. And immediately a bit of a jarring name because she's not real world. She's not road rules. She's not Are You the One even. She's she, Big Brother. She is a champ, though. I think people on this cast are going to make us question what All Star means to them. But I do agree with Zoe, like your champ, that has some elevation to it. And I do think her return seasons, she's actually brought something that like people thought she couldn't after her first. And I will say, with her being a new mother, I kind of like that she has this platform to come back and show us something. But I'm with you, Alan. She's not even MTV. Like, my, how we have veered from the path to God. It, we're off of it. But, mm. It, it could have been a lot worse. It's definitely not We Want OGs. Right. <laughs> I mean, she debuted around the same time on the challenge as Challenge All-Star Season 1 was happening. Yeah. It, you know, it's not it's not like someone who... It's not even like she's one of those people who came in around Vendettas, like in like 2017, 2018 era. Like, she's like firmly debuted in the 2020s and is now on All-Stars. And that just feels a bit jarring. I think Amber just knows that if anyone in her household is going to make money on the challenge, it's got to be her. So <laughs> they said they offered and she said yes, because someone's got to bring home the bacon. It might be Chauncey on his OnlyFans, but it's not on the challenge. You're right. But, so, you know, I do have a soft spot for her. And I, we talked on a previous podcast randomly about, like, how after she won Double Agent, she gave money to Darrell. Like, something about that makes me really like her. And I think since her, like, coming out with her diagnosis of being autistic uh, or having autism, that I'm excited to see how she plays the game and, like, if people give her more grace, if she's able to, like, better understand herself in this game. So. I think that she's a good person. Genuinely, like, a very good person. I think that doesn't always make for the most exciting TV, but it doesn't make me against her either. Mm Mm-hmm. I think she's an awesome person. I would love to be her friend. I will say, not my favorite reality TV personality at all. And I do think competitively she's very, I think she's very overrated personally. Um, I think I think she's very much a, what if Nelson had won Invasion type competitor? Because she kind of went to the season where she, it was the perfect circumstances for her to win. And then since then, like she's good in eliminations, but she's one of the worst daily challenge competitors I've ever seen. Like, she's never won a solo or pair daily. Doesn't really have, like, the problem-solving skills. Can't do a lot of puzzles. Can't do a lot of stuff on this show. Um, but unless, but if it's pure physical and, like, cardio-wise, she kills it. Yeah. yeah, she's the perfect person for a partner-type season, though, because with her cardio, if she has a partner that can just keep up with her physically and help her with the rest of that stuff, she's a huge asset, especially if she has, like, a male partner who can carry that load. Yeah, she would do really well in a season with like a Devon type partner. Yeah. 
Next up, uh, we got Zoe's favorite competitor ever. We got Anissa from the real world Chicago. Um, I'm tired of Anissa. I'm tired of saying I'm tired of Anissa, but yet here she still is. I have nothing she to say. I just have nothing nice to say. Yeah, we can breeze over it right after I say this because I'm the same way. She has to have something on somebody. Has to. <laughs> She's been on everything. I'm so sick of her. She's going to come on and lose the season. Mark my words. Like, there is no question. Anissa is not winning this season. That's a guaranteed lock. That's a, that's a guaranteed lock for, I mean, all the time. Um, Vegas didn't even take that bet. No, no. And I will give Anissa credit. She's lost some weight recently, and she's posted about it and stuff like that. But, like, I watched Anissa on this show when she was in pretty good shape. And even then, she never had the cardio or the willpower or the ability to win a final. So she sure as well doesn't have it now. And I know that you can make your body look better without really being in better, better physical shape. Like, there's plenty of people who look very good on this show who can't run. So... I, I will have to believe it when I see it because I'm, you're, I'm not a believer. Yeah. I'm a hater. I'm right there with you. Sign me up. We can join the club together. Well, let's stay excited. Let's move into probably the most energetic, explosive cast member on here. We got Ashley Kelsey from the real world San Diego. Speak <laughs> out. <laughs> Ashley is a nice person. She won her rookie season battle the seasons where she was. I mean, she was a good competitor. She was confident in all the daily challenges. It's super fit. Um, we then saw her on Invasion and Champ versus Pros where she had pretty short outings. But each time she had to face very strong players in elimination. Um, I have genuinely very little opinion of Ashley Kelsey. And that not in a bad way or in a, or in a good way. She's just a person who's existed on this show for a few seasons. I feel like she's going to come and be happy and kind, which is great. Her and Amber B can bond over being new mothers. Uh, and I'm scared that they will be besties and bring nothing to the show. It is cool to see someone back, I suppose. But, like, throw her a bone on a flagship season. Maybe not all stars. But I don't know. We'll just see what she can bring, if anything. I just have absolutely no opinion, which I think might be the greatest insult for someone on reality television. Yeah. And it is interesting because she is a challenge champion. She was, uh, she had a kid with, with NFL running back, Carry on Johnson. Um, there are interesting things around or about her life, but she just doesn't seem very interesting. So is she still with her baby daddy? No. So she's single? Yes. I mean, she I'm, will always be an object of affection. Fessy's going to fall in love with her. And we already know he loves moms. But he has a girlfriend. I'm pretty but, sure. But, yeah, okay, yeah. Does he sure. ever really have a girlfriend? <laughs> like, right. I had not considered that. There, hmm. there, uh, there will be a lot of men who are very taken with her. Mm-hmm. And women. Yeah. and Yeah. I'm not going to say what I was about to say, but yeah, they're going to be very taken with her. And now to the true excitement factor, really big return, really exciting. Two-time challenge champion, Ashley Mitchell, finally back. <laughs> like, I don't even care if that hurts your speakers and be squealing in my microphone. I have waited for this day. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I thought I would never see it again. I was told by people she would not be on. She wasn't contacted. It was not going to happen. Gamer alluded that maybe there was a mystery girl on and then said, actually, maybe she's not on with another girl that he thought was on. And I was crushed, demolished. Ashley Millionaire Mitchell, two-time, should-be, four-time champ, is going to be back. I don't even care. And this is a bold statement. I, I can knock them over, whatever. I don't care. I don't care if she's first boot. I'd be devastated, but I don't care. The fact that she's getting this opportunity to come back, to grace our screens, even if it's just for one episode, I have never been happier with the casting decision. 
on this show as much as I am as this. I am elated. I love her. I love her. I'm so excited to see Ashley back. I've missed her. The show has missed her. She is just everything you want in a challenge cast member. She is good at it. She brings the drama. She brings the hookups. She's hilarious. She is just darling. I love her so much. I'm so excited for her to be back. She's a perfect challenge cast member. I mean, drama, as you said, hookups, competition, everything she brings, confessionals, looks, everything about Ashley just makes me happy about her existence on this show. I also think she has a really good shot to win this season, looking at this cast, where I think they're, I I think she might be the top female player here. Um, And she's also coming with some backup, which we're going to get into in a bit, which I think it like really suits well for her. I don't think she has any, like massive enemies who are like she has some enemies but not people who are gunning immediately for her throat i i I really like ashley's chances i do too i'm doing the thing that my boyfriend says i do when i eat like really good food where i like start to like happy dance in my seat that's what i'm doing for ashley right now (laughs) swaying heavily because it just it puts me in my good place thinking about her being on this show so me too it's also just good to see her back after, like, what Luke said, like, there, there was a chance and there was a point in time where we thought, like, we might not ever see her again, and here she is. Thank God. Yeah. Someone who's been around for a while. Um, Beth? For World Los Angeles, this is her third All-Star season. Um, my opinion of Beth is that almost every season she does, she quits. And when she doesn't quit, she just really isn't good at it. She's really never been good at the challenges, um, regardless of her age. But, yeah, I mean, I'm just tired of Beth because it's just it's the same formula over and over again. Occasionally it's entertaining, but as a whole, I'm just over it. Agreed. There's She was always a lot bigger than a lot of the other girls on the cast. So when there was physical el- eliminations, she was scary to a lot of these, like, petite little ladies. Um, yeah, it's, it's a tired formula at this point from her. I don't find her that interesting. I think when she provided a necessary role back in the day and was that like villainous switch that everyone hated, but I don't think you need that anymore. And especially at her old age, we really don't need it. It's so tired. Any thoughts, Luke? I don't like her, um, <laughs> but I think from this point forward, my mind is just going to be like, how is this person going to respond to Ashley? Like, folks, I, like, I'm sorry for the person I'm going to be when we record these All Star Five podcasts. Like, my my mind will just be on Ashley. I'm sorry, and a couple others, thankfully. But uh, Beth is tired. She's lame. I think what she brings to the show is nothing anymore. Uh, just like Anissa, she's not going to win. She can go home and promote her eyelashes and be friends with John Brenton, the perpetual loser. <laughs> so I'm excited for her. We'll be going to any Challenge Mania events when Beth is one of the main draws. Well, I would, because here's the thing. I think she's a messy human. As far as, like, wanting to watch her on TV, not a chance. You wouldn't go to a Challenge Mania event because of her. You would oh, go no. incidentally she was also there. But you would not go out of your way to go to one. Right. Right. Shout out Challenge Mania. Yes. Yeah. Shout out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um. Someone people would go to a Challenge Mania just to see, though, uh, it's Dave Vaughn, who we have not seen since War of the Worlds 2. She did, she did her two War of the Worlds, or we haven't seen her since War of the Worlds 1, my bad. She did Final Reckoning, War of the Worlds, back-to-back, made a pretty big impact, won a bunch of eliminations, and then we have not seen her since. I think this is one that a lot of Challenge fans are going to be up in arms about the title of All-Star. Um I don't think Davon is a challenge all-star. I think she is a reality TV Mm all-star. 
Um, which, again, with some of the other names we've mentioned and will mention, I'm absolutely fine with her being here because she's great TV and she is someone people either root for or root against. She's not boring. Like, she's going to have interesting relationships with different people on this cast. I'm happy that she's willing to grace our TVs on the challenge again because we've been uh, toyed around with in that regard when it comes to her for the last few seasons, last few years. So I'm happy that she's making a return. Yeah, and I would even argue that despite her not being a champ like Amber B, she is more of a challenge all-star than Amber B, just in what she brought in terms of like the show. Like just the same with that Beth is an all-star. It's not because she's a great competitor. It's what she brought to the show. And I also think that her being so active with the Challenge podcast the past few years really has ingrained her into, like, the Challenge community. So I, I think it's cool. I forgot about that. I'm glad you brought that up. I totally forgot they host that podcast. Yeah, and I feel bad for saying we haven't seen her in a while because we have seen her on other shows. She, you know, she was on Big Brother All-Star. She was on uh, with All-Star Shore. Was, was that the show? Um, X on the and Beach. Then X on the Beach. Um, and She's she on The on, Goat right now doing well. Yeah. Which, is that on Amazon? Where Was that on? Amazon, yeah. Yeah. So she's been around, but she has not. I really thought we'd see her on the Traders before we see her on the Challenge again. Yeah, I thought so as well. But I'm here for it. And now let's go into someone who is undefeated on the All-Star series. It's John A. Mannion, first place finisher on All-Stars 1, and then one officially won the titles on 2 and 3. She has to have the biggest target going into this game as, like, nobody's ever beaten her on All-Stars. And somehow I feel like she won't. Like, this is not me being shady. Like, I somehow feel like she will not. No, I don't think she will either, because I think one of her biggest assets is that she gets along with people and they like her. And I think even her castmates root for her. Because she's that endearing of a human. I feel like she did have a pretty significant target, especially on like All Stars 3, and yet she still won eliminations and dailies to keep herself safe at the end. But I agree with you what you guys are saying. Um, and I think when... I, Initially, when this cast came out, I was trying to rank them as competitors, and I didn't want to rank Johnny too highly, but then I'm looking at everyone else, and they're all mostly pretty flawed players. And Johnny is just so well-rounded where she doesn't have, like, an obvious, like, big weakness on this cast that I really think that, like, she has a great shot to win. She's already proven she can, so... Yeah. I And also, like... To give Ashley some credit, I think John A on All Stars 2 and 3 really had the Ashley formula down of like, you don't have to be the most overwhelming physical competitor. You just got to be able to run and do puzzles in that final, which I think gives them both really damn good shots to win. Yeah. Katie's back again. Um, this is her third All Star season now, I believe. She also filmed season 40, which we're not going to talk about, but. I was shocked to see her do that season. I'm shocked whenever Katie wants to do any season because it never seems like she enjoys doing the challenges, playing the politics. And yet she keeps coming back. And I like her a lot when she blows up on people. But I, I, I don't know what's in it for her other than obviously the appearance check, which is probably nice. Is she a mom? Yeah. Nice little vacay away from the kids. Yeah, fair. Any Katie thoughts? Actually, no. <laughs> I just don't really care. Like, I think that she's has the possibility of, like, blowing up. But, like, even then, it's like she blows up and then she's done with the situation. So, like, it doesn't carry through for a storyline. It's just, like, a blip of a moment. See, Katie, I would say, of the women that have absolutely no shot to win, including Katie, I find her the most intriguing just because, like, I want to see who she gets along with and who she becomes friends with. I just, like... I want to see that social aspect of her because she's definitely not winning, like, period. It's not happening. So in terms of those non-factor competitors, I guess I care about her the most. (laughs) I think she's hilarious. Um, I think it's funny to watch her chicken out on challenges. Um, Yeah, I agree, Alan. I don't understand. She definitely doesn't like doing any parts of this show. 
Um, but I like her, so. <laughs> Someone who is good at the challenges, though. Um, Kellyanne is back again. Um, and she's the most all over the place competitor. Like, she's one of the most all over the place competitors this show has ever seen, where there are moments where she looks like one of the best competitors we've ever seen, and there are moments where she's just an absolute mess because she can't figure out like a five piece puzzle. <laughs> she's cracked. Yeah, I'm excited for her. It's just still so strange to me. We got so few flagship seasons of her. So I'm thankful that we were getting her heavily on All Stars because she was on one and three and back for five. And then on <laughs> USA? She's on World Championships. World oh, Championships, sorry. Where she was one of the few bright spots on that really rough season. Um, it's. I would really like to see Kellyanne get a win. I I fully believe she's like one of the best female competitors to not have the title challenge champion. I think she should have gotten it after tying with John A for first place on the female side of All Stars one. Um, I would even I, argue that she was the female winner of All Stars one because she was the first one up the mountain. And they yeah. have the same amount of points. But something always seems to go sideways for Kellyanne. Um, I, I've talked about it before. Like, she's a very bubbly and fun personality, yet socially she's always on the opposite side of the numbers, which at a certain point, that feels like a Kellyanne problem. I mean, it's definitely a Kellyanne problem. She's yeah. weird. She's tough. Like, I like her, and she's, but she's cracked. And I will be the first person to turn on her if she doesn't get along with my faves. Because I think that she is the problem. Yeah. <laughs> but I like her on TV, and I think she's great, and I hope she does well. But she's definitely uh, tough. I'm, I'm sure she is a tough person to spend a lot of time in a house with. <laughs> we saw yeah. recently. Next up, we got... Melissa Reeves, um, originally from Vendetta, is an ex on the beach. Um, not an all star. I'm just. I'm gonna. I'm gonna say it. Not an all star. Like I know that she brings stuff to the table, entertainment wise, and that she's not a terrible competitor. But this one bugs me in terms of this show. <laughs> Luke? We're, we're talking about Melissa? Yeah. yeah. Um, she's not an all-star. <laughs> she's just not. Um, there was a point in time, though, I think, like, I think of, I think of Vendetta as that first two episodes she came on, and she had probably one of the most explosive three episode stretches I've ever seen on the challenge. And then Total Madness, she goes to the final while pregnant, and even... This most recent season where I think I think she had some moments, but I've I've been very turned off by Melissa by kind of just her antics with Big T on social media after season 39 and just kind of their behavior at the reunion, too. And like the whole dress up thing, uh, that's that was real. That was a real turning point for me in terms of like being able to get behind Melissa. I think she's so contrived and so inauthentic. Like, she's so fake. Um, because I do think when you get little glimmers of, like, her personality where she's just being, like, fun and kind, I think that's actually more like who she really is. Because mm -hmm. a lot of people do like her. But the way she, like, I think it was Raven, right? She was goading into this argument and like laughing at the same time it mm -hmm. i'm just she's not an all-star i think that there's plenty of other people who could have been cast in her place yeah well at least we gotta talk about someone that zoe loves now and that is nani gonzalez from the real world las vegas i love um hey, Nicole. We saw Nani pretty recently on the last few flagship seasons. She made three finals in a row last time we saw her. Um, unfortunately, she's come up short each time. And I'm a big Nani fan as well, but especially by that last season, I was okay with not seeing her again for a while. It hasn't been fully a while yet, but it's been a decent amount of time. Nani's back. 
so I'll never say anything bad about Nani ever. Um, I love her with every fiber of my being. But I also think I have a really healthy attachment to her in the sense that my happiness and my love for her does not depend upon her winning. Yeah. Um, and I think that that's people who hate Nani love to throw that in the faces of people who love Nani. Um, but I don't care if she wins or loses. And frankly, I do not expect her to win because on that last season, there was never a better opportunity for her to win. So if it didn't happen, then I have a hard time believing it ever will. Um, so I hope she has a good time and she does fairly well, maybe wins an elimination or a challenge or two, and she makes some friends and she has a nice little vacation. I just hope the best for her. That's all. Like, I just think that's all. Yeah. And I'm glad Casey's not there. Me too. Very grateful for that because that's mainly the reason I was turning on Nani because she, she become just a bore with Casey. They just both became a, a wallpaper couch duo and it was just rough to watch. I hope we get some OG authentic Nani now that she's back on her own on a season. And now we got someone we've talked about way too much in the last couple months. Uh, Nicole Zenyatta from The Real World Skeletons. She was just on All Stars 4. Um, now she's a new All Stars 5. We hate her. She can't read. She's boo, annoying. Boo, boo, tomato, tomato, tomato. She's the worst. She is, I, I think, if I were to rank every challenge cast member ever, she's the worst for me. Yeah. I have no comment, and it's probably because I'm burnt out from All Stars for talking about her. But like, I, I'm fine without her on this cast. But yet here she is, and she's gonna come in, do her accent, uh, do her pull ups, and we know she's not a serious threat to win at all because she can't solve a puzzle or spell her name. So she can't even like get her hair up into a normal ponytail with that hideous low pony. Ugh, I hate oh. everything about her. Next up, we do have an actual challenge champion, though. Um, one of statistically one of the better rookie seasons we've ever seen ever. Uh, Sam McGinn from the Real World San Diego, um, one and done, won two eliminations, was on the team that won the most daily challenges, carried them to Vietnam. <laughs> Sam. Sam's most famous for fighting a plant. <laughs> Let's wow. Be- yeah, and she's most famous for. Really dealing with just Zach and Frank being complete assholes. Being abused uh, by them, truly. Yeah. Yeah. And it was tough to see. And then and then Sam was never really cast again, despite that, um, despite having the moniker champion. Even when they had seasons where they needed to bring in champions, still was never brought in. I listened to part of her podcast with Zach, where she was, like, locked to be on Invasion of the Champions. And, like, the week before she was supposed to leave, she called... Um, Ashley Kelsey and was like hey like are you showing up like I've not heard from you and she's like they've been calling me but like I, I didn't say yes are you going and and Sam said yes and Ashley said then I'll say yes so Ashley said yes and they dropped Sam for Ashley as they should we had yeah. this conversation I think off camera last week where I can recognize that what Sam what um, Zach and Frank did to Sam was absolutely awful and they deserve nothing good for how they treated her. But I also still don't like Sam. Like, yeah, I yeah. find her very annoying and uninteresting. Um, I don't want to hang out with her at all, ever, in any capacity. Like, that's so not even one of those people where I'm like, they're bad TV. I'm just like, I, I just don't vibe with you at all. Um, I don't think she's a good competitor. I don't think that she brings anything to the table entertainment-wise. I think she's just annoying. Um, yeah. Let me tell you, that woman runs a Buffalo Wild Wings like the Navy. Uh, she looks it. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I co-sign your sentiment completely, Zoe. And let's just move on from her because I feel like at this point, it just, I don't think she's a bad person either. But it just, uh, I just don't have anything nice to say either. 
fuck this person's on the cast? We got Sylvia from the Real World Skeletons, Lavender Lady number four. Um, number four. Which is not me being shady. In terms of the pecking order, she's the fourth Lavender Lady. That oh. is just, you know. Uh, but we saw Sylvia in All Stars 3. And I'll say this. I thought she was one of the best female competitors on that season. She was really good in the dailies. Um, had a really strong alliance. And then Naya called her out into that elimination where it was just a weird puzzle and she won. Um, but overall, like I thought behind John A and Kayla, Sylvia was clearly the third best female in that season. And she's since had a child, but I feel like is in better shape now than she was on All Stars 3 even. Uh, what's funny is my first reaction wasn't, I wonder how she'll be with Ashley. It was, I wonder how she'll be with Nani as they've never done a season together. Hmm. I bet they'll get along. Mm-hmm. Yeah, same. It's it's so helpful to have for Ashley to have Sylvia in that house as a shield. Um, that's Sylvia's role for the Lavender Lady Alliance. She's like their shield of like they throw her into elimination, and yeah, she's a good she's a good ally to have. She's been I think I think statistically Sylvia is like one of the most underrated players the show's ever had. Where she's won a lot of eliminations. She was in second place on Final Reckoning, just like so close to winning. Her and Josh were the only team in that game who were in the house from day one and went to the final without ever hitting redemption or anything. Sylvia's good. I think it's so interesting, and I'm guilty of this too. Like when you said you forgot she was on this cast, I think that she is so forgettable to so many fans while having many memorable moments. Like she's had beef with people. She's been in some great eliminations, like, ran the table on Final Reckoning, basically. But because she is the most muted personality out of the Lavender Ladies, and that's who she's associated with, and the same with All-Stars, right? She was with Veronica and Kayla, who have bigger personalities. She just flies under the radar. I think she's poised to do pretty well on this cast, though. Yeah. I, that first daily challenge of uh, All-Stars 3, where it was something mental, and Sylvia won it, and I was like, oh, I didn't know you were good at mental stuff, because that's what Ashley and Amanda are good at. Um, and you're right, Zoe. Like, I think that like her elimination with Melissa and Vendettas, her elimination with Kayla on Invasion, I think those are two of the top ten like woman versus woman eliminations the show's ever had. And no one, no one really talks about Sylvia as like an icon of the game, but she's she's part of a lot of these moments. Yeah. And she's also there standing in the background while Ashley stole the million dollars. That sneaky bitch, Natalie. But yeah, verbatim what she says. I watched the moment today. I think she actually dropped the seed off. I really did. I watched <laughs> Ashley Stills the Million today. I had to just like get a like a boost. Look, I will say if there was like a how often do you watch it? Because I feel like on any random day you could bet that you've watched it. It's not that often, but now that she's been announced for All Stars Five, it, it might be daily. It might be <laughs> like I need to configure on my phone how to like make that my alarm. TJ, all those things you said about those other partners are true, but this man has Blah, 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 blah. Like, I, I've got it memorized. Like, I could, like, go perform the monologue. Uh, anywho, who's next? <laughs> it is Tula, Big T. Um, and I feel like a lot of what we said about Melissa, copy-paste here. Absolutely. Exactly the same. With the I only thing that I'll say is I think she is more of an all-star in terms of what she's brought to the show than Melissa. Not that Melissa didn't have a good vendetta, but like Big T has been a pretty big staple since her debut, but that doesn't mean she's an all-star. She's a worse competitor, though. Yeah. And sure. I think I would almost say the opposite. I think she just because she's cute and pleasant, she gets a lot of confessionals. But <laughs> like, I don't think she that I think that's her thing, right? Like she's just likable. She's Miss Congeniality of the challenge. Yeah. But yeah, See, not an all-star. When she was on season 39, it was the big T show. But with the second she was off the show, the show got a lot better. Yeah, I didn't miss her. She's like a she's like a basketball player where like when they're when they're in the game. They're going to be taking every shot. They're not all going to be good shots, but they're taking every shot. Um, she's ooh, not we, have one, we got one more woman on the cast. <sighs> Veronica. And a lot of respect to Veronica as an OG of this game, but 
I mean, we're seeing it right now in All Stars four. She doesn't have the cardio to win a final. She still has some of the strategic and mental abilities to play the game, but she's just still not a factor. I would have much rather see uh, Rachel try again than Veronica back for another All Star season. Good for her for getting the free vacation, but definitely not winning. I have no comments at all. Yeah, it's uh, and I like her, but I just I don't I'm I need her to take a break from All Stars at this point. Sure. Well, I, I, the only thing I was going to say, she has to have one of the biggest appearance checks at this point, and she likes a vacation. So I, you know what? I do too. I, I like money and vacations too. Yeah. Can't we are, seeing, we are seeing someone back to back, and that's Adam Larson, who has been really impressive on All Stars Four as a competitor, but now he's going to be going against better players, and I think the last couple of weeks, especially where he's kind of trashed on Kara have really soured him a bit after some really impressive showings. And he doubled down he doubled down on that on I saw a clip from the Challenge Mania podcast. Um and went as far as to say that Kara's confidence was the problem. Like didn't even say her being cocky, it was confidence. And for a man with daughters, I just thought that was a bad look. Like really bad look really disappointed because I do think that he is a good guy um, and I think maybe he's just getting sucked into the reality TV of it a little too much and doesn't have Mm -hmm. perspective Uh, so I went from being like really high on Adam and rooting for Adam to just kind of wanting him to get a bit of karma yeah yeah karma Maria maybe It, it's so funny, like, how much those, like, comments have really just turned the opinion on him from just a few weeks ago versus, like, now. And Because he's a good competitor. He's been training hard. He's been very, like, active in the community. And now, it's just... We should be excited about him coming on to the season. It doesn't feel that way. Yeah, I think that he fits the bill for what we had previously kind of defined All-Stars as, right? Like, these OG players who can come on and kind of shine and show that they still got it. Um, But I'm, I'm open to having my mind changed back with Adam, but I'm not excited. Yeah. Someone I'm actively against being on this season, uh, Corey Lay. And again, it's one of those things like, he did he debut like when all stars already existed at that point like all stars one had already happened or maybe it was just about to happen and like he's just not an all-star he just he's he doesn't belong with this group of ogs i don't think he's a bad competitor um but he just he shouldn't be with these people not an all-star not an all-star i have nothing really to add I think we said a lot about him on 39, and my opinions haven't really changed. Learn to walk across a balance beam. That's. And I want to say, too, like, because I thought about this, because speculated were a lot of crazy names like Corey Lay. I don't blame them for taking the opportunity. Like, people are going to tweet them and be like, you're not an all star, yada, yada, yada. If I get called for this show that, like, gives me more exposure, of course I'm going to do it. I'm more so mad at casting that they, like, it just doesn't make any sense. Yeah, this one's about production, not him per se. I mean, if they asked me to come be on Challenge All-Stars because we talk about it once a week, I'd be like, hell yeah. right. Let's do it. And it's really, we haven't acknowledged it yet, and we've kind of, like, tiptoed around it. There are rumors that this is supposed to be a a Rivals format, but we don't even know whether it's going to be uh, all co-ed partnerships, if what they're going to be mixed matched with men and women, like kind of a final reckoning where it's all over the place. So it's really hard to analyze the game. And I think it's just for that reason, we're talking about them as individuals versus like potential partnerships. I still, even then, like, even if you told me Corey got us like the most amazing cast member that we haven't seen in years, I, I still really wouldn't want him on this show. Actually, that's a lie. If they told me we got Coral, then yeah, I'd be like, yeah, bring on Corey Lay, but it, that's like really the only scenario. If that was the only way we could get Coral, then I would be supportive. But my first instinct would be, there's got to be someone else. Yeah. 
<laughs> Next up, we got Devin. Uh, and yeah, Devin is an all star. Um, yes. I'll say that. Unfortunately, Devin is an all star. Yeah. Debuted around Rivals 3. He's been on a bunch of seasons, including end spinoffs like Champs vs. Stars before he was even anywhere close to being a champion. Uh, just did season 40. And now he's back to do this season, and Devin has turned himself into like an actual threat to win. He's not the most dominating player, but he's social. He plays the social game very hard, focuses on those puzzles and production. Typically never gives him a physical elimination, so that helps a lot. Yeah, and you reminding all of us that he debuted Rivals 3 before uh, Invasion seems like a crazy fact to me. He seems very much like a dirty 30, like was planted there, but he's been at this for a while. I mean, Rivals 3, and then they had him do second chances where he was the star instead of Invasion. Ah, oh, him and Rashida, yeah. And yeah, it was they, him, Tori, and Shanley were the, were the stars of that season. And then I, I will say, Are You Those Second Chances did not get its flowers. There probably was not longevity for a second season, but it was a great, I, I liked it a lot. Correct me if I'm wrong, wasn't it at first pitched as a challenge spinoff? Yes. And I think had they kept it like that, it would have helped ease in these Are You The One people and more people would have watched. I loved Are You The One Second Chances. I the, loved it. It was so good. It was good. The only problem was they kind of used like so many of their best pairs immediately on that first season. And then for like this, that's why there was kind of no idea for like a second season because they kind of wasted them all in the first. But I well, liked it a lot. It doesn't help that they stopped doing Are You The One also. That, that also hurt. <laughs> But even so, that wasn't until, like, season 34, 33. But, like, I'm with you. I You just brought up Shanley, and now I feel like my head's about to explode. So I'm going to be quiet. Robbed. Robbed. I mean, I mean for, for the real deep fans, there was a point in time where I thought people like Alicia and Carolina, who, like, you got deep in the MTV lore, I thought they were going to be, like, MTV stars for a decade. And that never happened. Let me tell you about meeting her after we podcast this. I've met her. So that's our review on Devin. Um, and then <laughs> moving to Fessy. Um... So I will say he is more of an all-star than Big T and Melissa, in my opinion, just in terms of like drama, hookup, competition, fighting. But yet he's still not an all-star yet. It's weird. I kind of have that feeling, too. I do think on paper he's an all-star, but there's something that, like, emotionally, I'm not ready to call him one, which is weird, because he's done all the things. Um, and I also, like, I I think there's this piece of me that's so annoyed that he's such a hard person to eliminate, because he is very good at this game. And, like, he's a he's physically elite, right? There's not many guys who can go toe-to-toe with him in a physical competition because he's so massive. Not even because I think he's that good. He's just so big. And I also think that he's in good shape. He's pretty smart. Like, but I'm still bored by him. Yeah, and I think that a lot of these people on season 41, him specifically, like, honestly, I feel like he deserved a spot on season 40 over a couple of the guys that were on the team that ended up being on the show. But I feel like a lot of these people that we're seeing now, this, this is their consolation prize because they weren't on the final cast for 41. Big T and Melissa were both speculated for a while. Rumor is, Gamer tweeted it, Big T got dropped like the day before, like ghosted. They didn't even tell her she wasn't on. Um, like people like Dave Vaughn would have been, been a lock regardless. But like, you know, Ashley should have been on Era 3. I know I'm talking about 40 too much, but like I think a lot of these people were the f- season 40 rejects or people they couldn't quite get for or weren't sure if they would fit. So I feel like despite Fessy maybe not being an all-star, this is maybe redemption for being snubbed last, last flagship season they filmed. He feels, he feels too new to be on all-stars still. Yeah. Fessy, Fessy had a few seasons there where he was pretty interesting and messy, but then that last USA season, he was just, I mean, a, just a total snooze fest. Yeah. Oh, I'm probably the person I'm most excited to see, and that's Frank Sweeney from the real world San Diego. I mean, 
probably one I mean one of the greatest challenge villains the show's ever seen. The guy the guy played the game not even at 110%. He played it at 150%. He was he took over the game politically as a rookie, ran the game, I mean, put himself in peak physical shape. Three seasons, never got eliminated. Um just just an absolute like top tier game player. He he was in and out within like a year and a half, but his legacy on the show felt like he was on it for like he his intensity felt like he was on there for ten years. He got first and then second. And then I I really feel like he could have won free agents. Oh, absolutely. Like he was killing it. Absolutely. I, I always wonder what if if he hadn't gotten sick and had to leave. He is as divisive as a person this should like he is you love him or you hate him and not much in between and honestly i go back and forth between both i love him because of that which i know that you do too my only regret is that him and ashley mitchell don't hate each other they like each other unfortunately (laughs) i wish they hated each other and could be paired of his rivals because we've not seen frank compete in a long time like you know he came in as a mercenary on vendettas but that didn't really count they didn't have that much stake in that competition I feel like he could do really well. He's in great shape. Like if you look at his Instagram, like the oh. man looks great. When when he wasn't on a show for years, it wasn't like he was doing like not, he was working as like a soul cycle instructor and then also getting like his his doctorate and stuff like that. Like he's he's kept himself in fantastic shape. He also like has been this like person where he's like, well, I don't want to be the person I was on reality TV anymore. And he's coming back on the show, and I think he's gonna try and be low key for a few episodes. But this guy is insane. This guy is crazy. Like this guy is. He cares so much about the competition once he's there that at, at some point the switch is going to turn on and we're going to get the old Frank back, and that's what I'm excited to see. Yeah, we need. We've been so desperate for like males who bring something interesting to the table on this show, and he is guaranteed to do that. Like, it it will happen. And I also think even if he's like matured and grown, I think Frank is also with it enough to know that he's on TV and he will. Yep. Make sure the fans get their money's worth. I agree completely. I'm so excited for Frank to be back. And also, we could pretend like his return on Vendetta has never happened now. Right. Back again, Leroy, Real World Las Vegas. Uh, We're seeing him on All Stars 4 right now. He's still in contention to win that. He just filmed season 40. And here he is again uh, with now his second baby. And I think we can all agree babies are expensive. Um, like we've said before, Leroy's like a likable guy. Um, so I'm never going to like scoff when he's on a cast, but I just don't know what he's going to bring. That's too different from all stars Four. I mean, of course, Cam's not on the season, but like him just filming 40 and then this, like, what is your storyline? Who would his rival be? I'm like, let's not say Veronica. Cause that would be a stretch at this point. I, I'm happy he's here because I like him, but like he serves no purpose in terms of me watching or not. Yeah, I mean, I'm always going to root for Leroy just because I like him. He's a nice guy, and I want him to bring mo- money home to his family. Um, <laughs> right. <that's... laughs> so, I'm sorry. You, you did not sell that super well. <laughs> but, like... That's kind of how it is. Like, I just, I'm, I can't root against him. Yeah, no, I, like, I feel the same way. Yeah, I just, I, I do love him, but I, I can't get as excited about this because he's on All Stars right now. And he, like, it was like, he retired, but, like, he barely retired. Right. And it's, I almost said, like, I'm really excited because we'll get FaceTimes with Cam and the babies. But, like, I shouldn't be most excited about seeing your soon-to-be wife and kids when you're the person on the show. Yeah, I'm I, I'm curious how he fits into this cast, and I think he's just going to revert to being like chill Leroy, who no one wants to throw in because everybody likes him, which is good for him, but not great for TV. Yeah. No. Someone who is great for TV, someone I love and adore, it's Shane Landrum. Oh. I... I never thought this was going to happen. I mean, we've talked about this. We've talked about this on we've talked about this on multiple podcasts about random episodes of TV. He was not even involved. But Shane is amazing, a 10 out of 10 cast member. He came on, he came back on Invasion. He stirred the game up politically. He played the game at a high level. 
I think like he's highly responsible for Ashley's two wins. Like he's always been like the brains of the Lavender Lady, where he was the guy working the game from all angles, trying to take risks. And it's weird because Shane has technically never been to a final, but to me, he's like one of the most important players this show's had in the last decade. Now that we're here at him, we've got Sylvia, Ashley, and Shane. What a travesty that we don't have Amanda, who has since tweeted, by the way, like those secretive ass bitches, like nobody told me, I think in jest. And she also said, I wish I hadn't said no. We were so close, folks, to having a Lavender Ladies reunion. And production should have seen that and called her immediately and been like, can you get childcare for five <laughs> weeks and get your ass here? But I love that you said, like, Ashley wouldn't have her wins without him because she also wouldn't have it them without Amanda. Like, Sylvia, not really. I mean, she was a number for sure. She's a Lavender oh. Lady 4, like you said. But um, you're right. He might not have been to a final, but he is definitely propelled. I'm excited to see him back with Ashley. I feel like he's going to be her biggest supporter because he knows what she's been through the past few years. He is the architect of the Lavender Ladies. Like, mm -hmm. he, I thought he was masterful in his return. And I thought he was great on Final Reckoning. I think it's hard to be partnered with Nelson. I think it's hard to be around Nelson. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think that Shane has one of the most memorable moments in challenge history in that hair helmet. <laughs> um, I really hope that makes its return because... There's just nothing that he could do to make me hate him. I just think he's so hilarious. Well, and let's be real. Looking at this cast, it's clear who his rival is. It's Dave Vaughn. Like, it has to be. And the two of them together is going to be absolutely great TV. And also in the sense that, like, I don't think that Dave Vaughn likes Ashley. I don't think she likes Sylvia. In fact, she had that whole YouTube video about Sylvia giving a weak-ass handshake and yada, yada. I think that they actually, I'm going to go ahead and say it, if they actually are partners, they are going to define this season. I think that they're one of what could be true rival pairs because I really don't think, I think that Shane will be happy to try and mend fences with Davon and become friends, but Davon does not like Shane. And I no. think... One, she's going to be hard to win over. But two, I think she also knows what makes good TV. And if she just, like, snaps her fingers and gives in and everything's, like, sunshine and butterflies and rainbows, that's not interesting TV. And that's she knows better. So I'm really excited. I hope that in that sense that they're a pair because uh, just it will be great to watch. Davon, I can already see it. Davon is clearly going to align with the CBS people and the newer people like Corey, Melissa, Big T, whereas Shane's going to have the Lavender Ladies, Veronica for sure, like these OG people, and they are really going to be like a litmus test of like, where's the season going to go? And it, I think that Shane's going to win out, but you're right, Zoe. Zoe uh, Davon's not going to give in easily. I think it's a kind of a similar parallel to Tori and Danny on World Championship <laughs> because like – both had good paths, but they just couldn't come together. And it ended up being their demise in a sense. Yeah. I'm excited to see what happens. Those dual confessionals between Shane and Devon are going to be incredible to watch. They're going to just be seeing their eyes turn at each other's senses. It's, it's going to be, that's a good, fun rivals pair. And I'm a big Amanda fan. I think not having Amanda is actually a really good thing for them this season. Because Amanda has so much baggage these days. And so it's just, I think that right now, this is a great time where Ashley hasn't been on a while. He hasn't been on a while. They have some, like, they have not the target they would have had in other seasons as the Lavender Ladies. And if they'd come on with Amanda, she would have been the liability. She's burned some bridges. I think right now they're in a really good spot. Agree. I think the only way that I would counter that is that Davon and Amanda are such good friends. Like they like still oh, interact. Yeah. With she could have been like the glue there to be like, wait a second. And she could have put herself in a good position. I agree with you. Like recency bias is so real. Amanda has been the devil on the past few seasons she's done in, in people's minds. So her not being there is good. And I actually hope that they don't make a big deal out of the whole lavender lady thing mm -hmm. because that's going to raise some eyebrows. Yeah. And if Amanda was there, then it is, like, undeniable, mm -hmm. you know? Because it's, like, well, those are, those are the Lavender Ladies, but, you know. Uh, yeah. Iconic alliance. 
both in who they are and like the name casting production because i know you listen to our podcast <laughs> <You don't. laughs> but i really actually need them to like get the three of them in a room and like facetime amanda like just give me that give me like yeah. a glimmer just what at least one scene i feel bad for the next person i talk about and that's steve uh <laughs> Like Steve on this podcast. He, he's on All Stars 2, All Stars 4, but Steve, to come down. He's an odd man out on this cast. We like I him. Like I, like... Yeah, I think that like All Stars is his jam. It's just hard because like he's small fish, big, big, big lake on this cast. Um, but like I liked him a lot on two. On four, he's interesting, but kind of getting weird and like quirky in a strange way. But like I still like him. It's the outfit that he's been yeah. wearing in his confessionals on four. It's the chain and the button down in the vest and the hair all the way down. Yeah. And I try to think of like who his rival would be. And perhaps it's something we've yet to see on All Stars Four, but like I can't piece it together. And again, we're just speculating that it's rivals, but that's been pretty heavily like almost confirmed by people on spoiler accounts. But yeah, like he's fine. He's an all-star in his own right. Um, but he is going to be like, we said this about Jasmine when we did the reveal for all-stars forecast. I feel like Steve is going to be overshadowed. We were wrong with her. So maybe we'll be wrong here. I just don't see a path for him to be a star. He can't be that explosive. He has like potential for a sort of an underdog arc or like, Maybe because he does kind of do what he wants. He doesn't always go with what like the house wants. So he has the potential to maybe like make the unpopular choice or turn things around if he's given power. I do think he's capable of that. But it, that's a very specific set of circumstances. Maybe he'll pull Ashley Kelsey. I mean, the only person I could see him being with at this point, and this is again, if if something happens that we haven't seen yet, is maybe Nicole. Like, because she's mm. getting so bent out of shape with him right now that maybe there's something else that transpires, but yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, cool. That's and there are some names who could get potentially added, and I think if a name were to get added, I think Tech would make sense as a rival um, from All-Stars 2, and maybe they have, like... That would be, like, one of the only, like, male-male partnerships where I, would have, I wouldn't really scoff in my head. I was like, yeah, that's, I, I don't really think that's a part that's going to win. Yeah, and I don't I, I agree with you, but I also don't think Tech will be back. I think he's written the show off. And also he's yeah. doing the show that Dave On's on right now, and he's invisible. Interesting. Yeah. We'll see. Uh, that's our cast right now. Uh some names will likely be added. We just want to note that. Um, because there's some missing puzzle pieces here. Um but as a whole, I think I think we're all very jazzed. We're all excited. We got Ashley, we got Shane, we got Frank. That's what else enough. Do you need? I'll be honest with you. And again, I just mentioned recency bias with Amanda. This might be recency bias with me. I'm actually more excited for this cast than I was for All Stars Four. I was very happy that Cam, Laurel, and Car Marie were on, but that was about it. And as we've seen, those three women have carried the show. But uh, and also Dave on we like I'm excited for Dave on. I know that she's not an all star, but like yep. mm -hmm. she makes good TV. So like Ashley, Dave on Shane and Frank, I, I I really am so excited. And I think, yeah. And Nani even I'm not even like appeasing Zoe when I say this. Nani has that like likability factor where like. You want to root for. Her. Some people don't feel that way, but I do. Well, yeah. <laughs> I would say I agree with you, Luke, especially where like last season, the initial excitement was Cara, Cam, Laurel. And but then it's like you I remember I looked at the mail. So I was like, this is a historically weak mail cast. And then the season we're watching right now, it's a historically weak mail cast where we're talking about JG is one of the best players like on the show. Which I just um, want to add to. He was like on the cast until today. It was announced that he actually wasn't on the cast. And I was thinking he'd be Ashley's rival. And I'm kind of glad that he's not, but he's been in such good shape that maybe I wanted it. To, I don't know. But yeah, I think that this has good prospects, male and female side. And I think we could very much have a situation where we're 
nine episodes in and not be saying, okay, if only one person wins, you're going to be happy. I think there's a lot of people here that we could root for that won't go out early, knock on wood. Yeah, and I think it'll be fun to watch some of these people that don't deserve to be there lose. I also just like watching some of these people interact. Like, how are Kellyanne and Ashley going to deal with each other? I I'm, mentioned... Yeah, I that's what I like to see with, like, these OGs and some of these very new people. Like, I think, like, can you imagine Steve watching Melissa and Big T walk around this house compared to what his experience has been on All Stars? He's going to be like, am I in the Twilight Zone? Like, what's going on here? Right. Like, imagine Sam, with how she currently is as a human, like having a conversation with big t like the two don't even seem like they like exist in the same universe yeah but yet they do and it's really cool timelines are converging yes this podcast went much longer than i expected i'll be honest um but we had a fun time went through the whole cast and we hope you know when we podcast about this season in five six months whenever it comes out hopefully not a year and a half if the other all-star seasons like to come out um We'll have a good time. But yeah, Vebmo.com if you want to keep up with spoilers. Subscribe to us on YouTube, Spotify, wherever you can find us. Stars 5, baby.